don't think you adopted me. Oh, really? Yes. That's the first time I heard that. No, seriously, people at school said, did your mom adopt you? Welcome back to Donuts and Coffee with Danielle and... Tanea! We are back here with our second episode now. Second? Yeah, this is our second episode. Yay! So, today, we're going to talk about the topic of... Well, I haven't given it quite a, a title yet, but I'm sure I'll come up with one by the end of us talking together. But if you come up with one, just let me know. So, I was talking to you earlier about... In the first episode, we talked about how we met, mm -hmm. our first interactions, first impressions, mm -hmm. how we get along pretty much now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the new aspect of your life is school, where you're now in the what? Third grade. Yes, awesome, go third grade. But we also had the experiences of kindergarten, first, first grade, second, and second grade. Pre-K. You, didn't have, you wasn't in pre-K. Yes, I was. No, you wasn't. When, when were you in pre-K? When I was living in Texas. No, that was no pre-K. Oh. That was daycare. But um, <clears throat> I was thinking about that because one of the first questions, uh, because your dad and I work... Um, you were in before and after school care for some of those years. <laughs> oh, so you'll also hear some of Zaria laughing because she is. <laughs> she's a part of this podcast, apparently. Um, our third member, we call her Milk. <laughs> <laughs> or Applesauce or Sweet Potatoes. Or fact. But uh, one of the things that I've noticed, I don't know how much you paid attention to when, like, we'll drop you off at school or show up for parent-teacher night, and people will be like, that's your mom, or that's your dad? I know. I'm, I'm used to it by now. I know, but some people, let me preface and say this, Sanea is biracial. She is, I mean, you can... I'm black and white. Her dad's black and her mom's white. And then um, her dad is light-skinned <laughs> and I am more of the cho chocolate tea hue. Um, so we definitely get a lot of questions, a lot of stares and stuff when we're out and about. Uh, with Sanea having um, fair skin, straight hair. Mm -hmm. in, in a roundabout sense, Sanea... I mean, first looking at her, someone might think that she's only Caucasian or that she's only white. So when she... Or they don't think you adopted me. Oh, really? Yes. That's the first time I heard that. No, seriously, people at school said, did your mom adopt you? Oh, really? I didn't know that. Um, but because I show up for most of the pickups... Um, but we're together for like school activities and stuff like that. So we would get the stairs and I'm sure there's always questions. But that was one of the um, things I thought was interesting as to how many times people would say, Say, that's your mom? <laughs> or like, who mom is that? And it would be like the only other black girl or something in the class and they think oh so and so there's your mom and I was like no Sine is mine <laughs> I don't know that little girl Sine is my child this time there is I don't think there is a black girl in our class this year it's not mm -hmm. oh. only Mexican looking girls and white girls oh I don't know I thought you said something else but um in me who that's one of the things Another dynamic to our family, our um, blended family, is with the slight cultural differences. But with Sanea being with us full time, she's pretty much around her uh, black side of the family. And with her black cousins, her black aunts, uncles, and things Jersey. like that. Well... Jersey 
is first of all jersey's italian black and mexican she's a little bit of everything so that's like a different dynamic and plus her parents are married so that's her dynamic is that she will hmm. but you're not all you're not necessarily around your your white side of the family so that's like a different dynamic when she has her when Jersey has her her mom she has her nanny her um, aunts and you know talk to her uncles and stuff like that so that's a, another different dynamic so we, I really wanted to hear your and I know you have some questions for me later on in the podcast but tell us tell me about your feelings as being a biracial child with black parents. Your honest, honest feelings. First of all, please, language. Language. What language? Black parents. We, I'm black, your daddy's black. I still got a white mama. I know, but I'm, that's the, <laughs> that's the question. Like, how do you feel with that? Or how do you interact with um, like the kids at your school okay. when you're confronted with those questions and stuff like okay. that. Okay. So. You have to get close to the mic. Okay. So. You don't have to yell. Okay. Uh, what I think when I see everybody in my school. What are your feelings of as being a biracial child with black parents? And okay. how you deal with that at like school and stuff like that. Okay, so sometimes at school I sort of get picked on, but I just do not care because you both are black and, and people are like, ugh, you're white, your parents are black. Really? They say that? Yeah. And, and they like, you should probably go home and sort this out. But, Really? Mm-hmm. So how does that make you feel? I swing my hand and I walk away. That's that, honestly that's really tough to hear. I know. Because I know that you're you have a, a beautiful heart and you're you're much greater than the fact that your your dad is black and your mom is white. But I know that it's a very, it's a reality in your world. And I'm sure it's the reality of a lot of kids that's probably listening to this podcast right now or their parents. For someone who isn't white, and, I, and honestly, I, I didn't really grow up around a lot of white people. And, and it's not like um, teaching you how to be a white or anything. And I hope I'm saying this right or I make it, and I hope I'm allow it to that it makes sense because coming from the black perspective growing up in a black home black culture and things like that I only know how to respond as a mom in that way. And it and not saying that there's only one way to raise a child as a black mom, but there's so many different cultural norms that you're raised with. Um, I have to say something else. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty bad, by, but I know I can't let that stop me. So I tell them I'm not adopted. Please mind your own business. Yeah. And if they and if they don't stop, I can't take it. I yell, and then if they keep on doing it, I tell the bus driver. I wasn't wasn't ready for that. You okay? E, not really, because I want you to be able to stand on your own two feet and be able to handle, because. If you allow someone 
to constantly like pick on you about the same thing, they'll continue to do it. And it's like, I want you to be able to develop a, a level of strength within you to tell whoever that little girl is, like, pretty much you need to stop. And, I mean... Because when I got done saying that, she went off the bus. So I was like, bye, Felicia. Oh, gosh. Since we were talking about the whole black and white thing, do you feel like you're missing out on something? Sometimes. So, what do you think you're missing out on? No, I don't think I'm missing out on a lot. Just one little thing. Yeah. When I look at, sometimes I feel bad when I look at myself in the mirror and then I look at somebody else in my family. Mm. Why? Wow. <laughs> Because sometimes I feel like that. Like I am just, it's a big family, and I'm just one person that joined the family. Really? But you are one person that joined the family. God made you special. No, like one person that joined the family that. Okay, so this is the family. Mm -hmm. This is me. Okay, this is where we were, and now this this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. This is the family, this is me. <laughs> really? All families on one side, and I'm just one little person in the family. Doesn't matter. You feel like, you really feel like yeah. people don't? Sometimes. When? Tell me when. Sometimes. Times. Sometimes at heart. Sometimes like at the at the penguin park when I joined everybody else. I barely, I barely, I feel like I barely even knew them. They barely even know I was oh, joining. Oh well, you know what the thing is. No, they're your dad's friends that he grew up with. Um, that, okay, let me say this. They're not blood family. He went to church with, and they just had a very strong um, friendship. So, no, you don't feel out of place because that was their family event. It wasn't our family or your dad's oh, side of the family oh. in particular. Because grandma wasn't there. Uh, Pam wasn't there, Aunt Janie wasn't there, so it wasn't... At least Liv was. Yeah, so she came to hang out with you. So, you shouldn't feel that way in that circumstance, because that wasn't your blood family. It was their actual family event. Okay, but there are other times I feel that way, too. Like when... I don't know. There's so many. Well, you have to let me know with those times so we can talk about it. Because the the bad thing is letting it mess with your mind. And then you'll have it in your mind and in your heart that, oh, I'm separate from the family when that's not, that's not the case. You know? You get what I'm saying? Because if you constantly have these negative thoughts in your mind, they're gonna they're gonna mess with your mind and then you're gonna react in a negative way from that. So whenever you feel like you are struggling or you feel like you're not a part because even for me as a child sometimes I didn't feel like I was a part of the family but I feel like there's something that everybody has a feeling of feeling sometimes um, or two, you can take the initiative, you know what I mean? <laughs> you take the first step. You Not necessarily waiting for somebody else to take a step, but you make the first step to make, to make that change. So if you're not feeling the part, like grab somebody and like, oh, let's go do this or let's go do that. Don't allow, um, others 
you should definitely like it's normal that it's you know look at me it's totally normal but if you're really like you well, know in that moment or in those times you're feeling like not a part say something you, you know you can always come and talk to me i'm a real example like what a granny house my parents mm -hmm. when you were when you were all playing dominoes Mm -hmm. Out and you were watching. I was trying when the music was playing. I, I was trying to dance, and I was like, "I'm the ghost." <laughs> well, and when you were in that that room, I kept on walking up and down the steps until you noticed me. Well, the thing is with that, we were having a, a grown up conversation that didn't involve children that's that situation and then with the dominoes that's an adult game unless the kids and stuff are playing you know unless the kids are playing that's when they're usually involved but that's why the kids tend to be off no. in that room i mean off into the um, other family room playing Okay. Back in the, it's, it's kind of like a thing that, that's a cultural, is very normal in the black community to hear a mom or a grandma say, stay out of grown folks conversations. I know you heard that before, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So con sometimes it's that type of situation, but I'll, I will be more in tune to that now that you said it so that I can explain to you during those times so you don't feel left out. But that means you have to come to me and say, excuse me, can we talk? And I'm perfectly fine with excusing myself and talking to you. But that means you have to do your part too. So, okay, what were some of the, the questions that you had for me? Why do you say yes? Why did I say yes to marrying my father? Marrying your daddy? <clears throat> I say yes to marrying your daddy because, for one, I love him. Two, I see a lot of great things within your dad. I felt like he was a good daddy. I love the way he treated me, and I saw a great future for us. He's fun to hang out with. He had a beard at the time, but he didn't cut it off since then. The beard fine. was a plus. Another thing is like he got along wonderfully with my dad. Mm -hmm. Very, very true. So one of my other questions were, were you ready to have a baby? Um, as far as you or Zaria? Zaria. Oh, yes. I don't feel like there's ever a perfect time. Um, but <laughs> I, honestly, I partially felt a little um, not old. I don't, I didn't, honestly, I didn't know if I could have children. Really? Yeah, I wasn't for sure. And um, after my surgery, because I had to have surgery in order for me to have her. So after I had surgery, I got the all clear from the doctors and we started trying to have a baby. And boop, here she is. Oh, she's so cute with that chubby face and she's not even smiling. <laughs> okay, next one. What's your next question? Okay. So yes and no. Huh? I say yes and no. You never like really. I don't feel like you're ever ready, but God prepares you. He gives you the, the skills and and the mind and the heart to get ready to have a baby. So yeah, yes and no. Oh yeah, yeah. Why why are you so nice to me even way I'm not your? I don't want to say real kid, but. You know what I mean. Well, the, I guess like the term is biological, since uh, your mom is your biological mother. 
um, why am I so nice to you? Because I love you. I don't want to ever... I mean, God forbid, God forbid, if anything was to happen between me and dad, or if I was to pass away or something, um, and then your dad has another, <laughs> if your dad have another woman in his life, I would want her to be just as, just as nice, just as good to Zarya and you. Um, and then they need to come. Yes, if we have more kids. But I just, I believe in a level of karma, meaning that, um, or in the Bible talks about you reap what you sow, uh, what you plant is what your, your grow. Like if you plant a, um, an apple tree, an apple seed, what you're going to grow is an apple tree and you'll get that fruit from that. But if you grow weeds or sow some weeds and thorns, that's what you'll get is weeds and thorns. So I believe in being good to others so that it can, so in turn, I will reap good things. But, but I feel like it's the right thing to do. It's in my nature. I would never <laughs> cause any harm to kids. Um... But I feel like that's one of the worst things you can do is bring harm to a child. And I would never do that to you. Because I love you. I love you too. Say I love you, Zarya. You need be nice. Say I love you. What's your next question, love? Do you need a house to protect me and Zarya? No. I need God to protect. To give me the strength and tools and stuff I need to protect outside of what daddy already does to protect us so no, no i don't need a house to protect us. so tell so for that question i want you to tell me if we didn't have a house i want you to tell me how you would protect us um uh, i don't know to be honest i don't know i mean keep the doors locked <laughs> what doors Really, the front and the back door. The garage. I said if we didn't have a house. No, we still got. We don't have a house. That's. We don't have a house. We in a townhouse. We still have a front door and a back door, and we have a garage. What's your other question? Are you happy with? I am very happy. I, um, I mean, as a mom, and then. Helping you grow into a young lady, into a woman. Are there some things that I need to get better at in helping you doing as far as like keeping your room clean, reading more, um, just keeping your stuff organized and just basic self-care. Um, I do feel like I need to step it up. Um, I'm not used to that aspect because I'm so used to taking care of uh, myself. That's the area that I do need to grow in. Okay, next question. Are you happy? Period. I am. Okay. I am. Okay. And um, let me tell you why I'm happy. I'm happy because God constantly God constantly protects me God has been good to us a lot of good things are happening like job wise um, your dad and our relationship is just growing me and your relationship you and I our relationship is growing because uh, if things, it wasn't I mean honestly things could be could be really bad but it's not and could I nit nitpick at things that are wrong yeah anybody can find stuff if, if that's wrong but I'd rather have a positive outlook on life and look at all the blessings that God has given us so am I happy yes okay 
Do you regret buying me all those things? What things? Only, um, I honestly only regret buying you one item of things. And those are beverages because you were just like your daddy and you drink half your stuff and leave it there. That's the only thing I regret buying because I feel like that's a waste of money. You don't even like the hot cocos and the smoothies and different types of drinks and stuff like that. that girl, that stuff is expensive and you don't be drinking half of it. You so. make smoothies sometimes. And the only, the other things, look at all the stuff, literally stuff you have. That stuff to you? Yes, a lot of stuff is just that stuff. That that we made, that's no, stuff? No, no, that's not stuff. We had an actual activity. We actually had fun together. Those are memories that we had that you we can't take away. So that's not the same thing. It's just buying. It's like those things versus I'd rather go to... And this is actually something I'm thinking about doing anyway. Is like going to a shelter, serving homeless people gathering things for other people that's in need. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other questions for me? Yes. I'm sorry. Will you be ready to train Zarya? I hope so. I hope so. She should be alright. I'm not scared. Um, do I enjoy her just being a baby right now? Yep. But those are all my questions for now. All right, let's end this podcast. We can finish it. There is more conversations to this. This was actually a really deep conversation today that I wasn't necessarily expecting, but I guess we got to um, keep it real, as they say. Join us again. If you have any questions, um, want to talk about your family dynamic, you can always hit us up at naturally danny at gmail and that's n-a-t-u-r-a-l-l-y d-a-n-i-e at gmail and you can ask myself danielle or Sanea any questions you have in regards to your family dynamic um, are you in this situation have you dealt with this we're not prof- <laughs> we're not professionals but we're just living our real lives So just join us again. Um, Thank you for all the love that we received on our first um, episode and look forward to providing more uh, podcasts and more episodes for you. So Nay has to go to bed. (laughs) Got school in the morning and time for Zarya to go to bed too. So again, thank you for listening to Donuts and Coffee. With Danielle and Sanea. Join us again. Have a good one. Hello. Hello. <laughs>